Hello and welcome to the SRCC podcast. My name is Shauna Kelly and I am one of the project workers here in the centre. Sligo Rape Crisis Centre offers support to anyone who has been affected by sexual violence. We are here to listen. We offer information, advice and a range of supports across Sligo, Leitrim and Cavan. You can contact us on 1800 750 780 or info at srcc.ie. Today's podcast is an interview with Sligo Rape Crisis Centre CEO, David Madden. Welcome, David. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. So I'd like to start off with asking you a bit about yourself. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I believe there's a few qualities that define who I am, both as CEO and also as a person. I have a strong sense of justice. I'm not talking about marching in the street type of demand for justice and I believe there's a time and a place for that but in my role as CEO I think it's possible to be equally if not more effective in advocating for justice by how I run the company. In terms of services I think being in a position to offer trauma-informed respectful and sensitive services to anyone affected by trauma and the various types of violence to go along with it I think that's how justice is served with compassion for survivors and a relentless focus on addressing the roots and causes of injustice. Doing this through education and awareness work that we do here is probably the best way we do this. I also do it by being well organised as a person, um, being someone who likes to see both sides through good information and understanding. I think to really try and be non-judgmental, you have to be you have to hold two opposites in mind at the same time and always have a question how well are we doing i'm enthusiastic about my work and how i do it i feel like i'm a good communicator uh, and i have a strong work ethic uh, someone who enjoys the challenge of change which always happens in an organization like this there's always changes and the responsibility of service development i find i can make difficult decisions that sometimes others find hard to do. Outside of work, I'm a family man who has the support of my partner and children. They understand how important it is for me to enjoy my work, but also that I'm available to respond to any challenges that arise within the role of a CEO. I've lived abroad for many years uh, in America and England. I've also lived and worked in Dublin and Kildare for quite a long time. So coming back and living in the West has become very important to me. The people, the place, the history. And one side of my family is from the West and the other is from the North. So um, I'm getting closer to home. So apart from the qualities I mentioned, I believe in high standards of integrity and service quality. I believe these are needed to be at every point that our client contacts with our service. I understand the importance of high quality services and know they're key to helping people recover from traumatic experiences. And can you tell us some more about what your role entails? My role is quite varied. Uh, On any given day, I can be dealing with high-end ethical problems in counselling, involved in running a trauma-sensitive counselling service. Then on the other hand, working on funding proposals, human resources, financial problems and then in contrast dealing with something as mundane as parking for visitors or bad plumbing. Mostly though my role is to ensure the organisation is well run, complies with good governance in in terms of legislation in the area, ensuring the books balance and that the money we get in is well spent, that funders and the people kind enough to donate to us know that their money is being spent in the most effective and efficient way possible. I'm a conduit between the board and the day-to-day running of the company, a go-between between between operations and strategy. Why did you choose to work for SRCC? Um, I've worked in the voluntary sector, the non-for-profit sector for many years. I've worked with vulnerable populations in rural and urban settings. For many years, I've worked with people who, through no fault of their own, have been traumatised. For me, working here is a natural continuation of this work. When I was offered the role, I didn't have to think very long about it. I thought, I can do something here. I can really make a difference. And what do you like most about your role as CEO? 
It's that I like to lead the way and manage the provision of specialist services in this area of sexual violence and the related trauma caused by it. As a company, um, I get to work with dedicated and a talented board of trustees who are adept at taking the centre on to better things. I've, I've also a dedicated staff team of volunteers, project workers, staff and counsellors, all of whom want to provide the best possible service to their clients. Uh, we have our main funders, Tusla, who are fully behind everything we do and how we do it. I also get to live and work in the west of Ireland by the sea. So who could ask for anything more? Hello, you are listening to the SRCC podcast, which is coming to you today from our head office on Kempton Parade in Sligo Town, just beside the Garavog River. In this episode of the SRCC podcast, we are talking with David Madden, who is SRCC CEO. And what are some challenges you face in your role? Challenges have been varied. Some challenges were inherited, like working practices and the culture of the organisation. These can be some of the most difficult, particularly when they block the progress of the organisation. Others come along from outside, like COVID-19 and the devastating effects that has had on everyone. No one could have predicted how the pandemic would challenge everyone, personally and professionally. Then there's the other self-made challenges, like bringing a consent and disclosure programme to second and third level colleges, adapting a programme to fit the audience. All these present with different levels of difficulty and inherent challenges, but they all have one thing in common, and that is change. My view is to embrace change. We all know that nothing stays the same, so why not build it into our plans and reviews, that things will not remain the way they are. Demand for services will rise and fall, Staff and volunteers will come and go. Funding will rise and fall. So why not plan for these things by building in flexibility into planning, operations and reviews that enable change to take place and, take, and shape the organisation? It's about people and people change. Service organisations like this one comprise of people. Demand for services is affected by social behaviour. You know, what people are doing out there social and political contact services operate in are largely about people. It's people who are best placed to respond to the needs that present to our service. Knowing this helps with planning. The law is constantly changing and as precedents are set, new laws come into force. Government guidelines for charities change, sentencing guidelines for sex crimes change, acceptance or lack of acceptance of crimes also affects what's ha- what happens as does the media and its reporting on crime and punishment. We live in changing times. Climate change, social change, and the Me Too movement, Black Lives Matter, tolerance around sexual orientation, economic boom and bust, and how people view each other, how gender is perceived. All this affects how violence is perpetrated and what passes for acceptable. So it's important to embrace change. As CEO, I think it's important to steer clear of contentious issues and remain apolitical. We are not on one side or the other. We don't take sides. In fact, as soon as you pick a side, you alienate the other side. We are on the side of survivors and victims. In this line of work, we often pick up the pieces of crimes committed. How fair things are or not is something we deal with in the centre every single day. Injustice in society happens at many levels, But sometimes the process of justice favours one side over the other. That inequality is something we've had to contend with. It's largely outside our control. What we can do is advocate for people, raise awareness and bring suggestions forward and lobby for improvements when we can. On an organisational level, we can plan for change. We adapt. Like when when the COVID virus came upon us, we were a small organisation, but we have agility we're able to adapt quickly. We spent long days producing new policy and procedures to adapt our services to the changing restrictions. Within a few weeks, we were back to full capacity, moving from in-person to online and phone services to meet the needs of our clients and still have good governance. This is largely due to the hard work of the trustees of the board, led by the chairman. They're always thinking about the best governance and compliance. What do you hope to see in the future within SRCC? When I can, I like to take a longer view. 
Uh, in the beginning, it was easy to see what was working and what was not working. It was hard to make the necessary changes that ensure the centre would steer away from being in the doldrums. I was able to use the expertise of the board to copper fasten better governance, improve service offerings, improve the custom and practices that had developed, to get out of debt, break even and start to operate in the black. That all took time and needed to be addressed before any significant improvements could be made. So my vision is underway. I already have a plan in place to succeed, a four-year strategic plan. My plan involves four key stages for which I have full support from the board. The initial stage has been getting through understanding of where we need to be as an organisation, including right now our strengths, the weaknesses that hold us back, and also the opportunities that are available within the industry that can help us thrive and move forward. The second stage is creating a definite action plan based on short, medium and long-term strategic financial objectives. I have considerable experience in creating action plans that deliver results. And I'll also use my experience from previous positions to ensure this plan's objectives are both actionable and achievable. For example, I've developed a service in Calvin to help serve the needs of that area. The third stage of my plan has been the recruitment and selection of key staff who are in a position to help deliver the changes needed so we can ensure the highest quality services to our clients. We have some great volunteers, project workers and counsellors who are highly talented and able to deliver on the changes that the organisation wants to make. And finally, the fourth stage of my action plan is to provide necessary resources, motivational support and leadership direction needed for us to succeed. While my plan will always be flexible and adaptable to the challenges and the changes in the sector, my plan is very achievable. So far, the feedback from clients, volunteers, staff, the board and our funders is very encouraging. So this is a question we ask everyone who we have a chat with on the podcast. But what do you do for self-care? In this line of work, self-care, I think, is really important. For anyone to look after themselves, they first of all have to be aware of how they are in themselves and how this might be affecting others. So self-care for me is about checking in with myself, asking myself, how am I doing? The way you'd ask a friend, how are you? If the answer is not good, then it's about listening to what is, what is working, what's not working and how it can be remedied. One way is to ask others, a supervisor, a manager, a work colleague, a friend or a family member, whoever's closest to us, usually can see how well we are doing or not. So I ask myself and I ask others, and then I take action on what I hear. In practical terms, for me, looking after myself means spending time with family and friends, eating well, sleeping well, having fun, and getting out into the waters and the wild. And is there anything else you'd like to share with us today, David? Yeah, thanks, Sean, I would. Um, I'd just like to end by saying I, I believe in the, the power of human connection. It can be life-changing. It can be transformative. How, how one person sharing with another can be healing and open the door to recovery. So if you or someone you know is affected by sexual violence, if it's something you carry around and it won't go away, if a part of you thinks a good way to solve the problem is to stay quiet or say nothing, I would urge you to please speak to someone. You're not alone. Specialist help is available. We are a safe, confidential and free service. We're here to help you. We're here to listen. Give your experience a voice. We have skilled professional counsellors available to listen and to help you, no matter what you've been through. We are here to listen. Thanks for talking with us today, David. Thanks for listening to the SRCC podcast. If you would like more information, some support, or if you would like to make an appointment, please get in touch with us on 1-800-750-780 or info at srcc.ie. We're here to listen.